you'll notice there are some things in the middle of each one of your groups. The first one that's in yellow is walk this way. That's what this station is for and that's what this group is going to do. I want you to use your sonic motion detector and the calculator to get a connection between time and distance parabolically. At the end of the period, you're going to tell us what you found out. This group over here has been given the actual data for Haley's Comet. And they're going to develop an equation so that they can read that equation and tell where Haley's Comet is at any particular point. This group over here, they're going to decide which conic section to use, and they're going to build me an arch. I also want to tell you what's going on on the sidelines. Ms. Brazil is doing a web page. We have several webmastering students in here working with you today. They're going to be going out and taking digital pictures, taking a movie, and documenting all of the work that you're going to be doing in here today as you do the work. And they've gotten definitions for all of the conics that you're going to use, and they're going to pull all this together. So the students to reconstruct my doors that have the arch no more than half of the distance between the upper door facing the ceiling. We have to find if there's another way and what conic section we use. Could you have used another way? So what we have to do first is just measure. Think that's going to be hard enough for you to start off with? You want something easier? You think you can handle it? We can handle it. Okay. Does it matter? Do the axis one. I prefer it. Two point one. 12.9. Let me see your pencil. 62.6. How is it? 24. Well, so we have to measure. Yeah, and then you gotta go just a little bit over the fourth one. Go back to the other one. Ready? Go. You gotta go fast. Fast. Come back, come back, come back. Okay, it was all right. <laughs> <laughs> 40. So that's our lot of circum? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, I was just slow and then you didn't, they didn't got too fast on her. That's pretty steep, so you gotta go fast. What's the difference between. She started, she started slow and then she got faster. That's right, so her speed increased? Her speed was good on this part, but on that part it was too slow. It's irregular. Okay, yes. and what about. This right here. It's walking too fast. She walked too fast for it. I think we all this. Yeah. How's it going? Y'all yeah. having any problems? Uh, we just can't figure out where to go. Where to go? To get, to get rid of this. So, so we need to hold all this. That's right. In other words, you're solving for why. Are you doing this so you can put it in the graphing calculator? Right, that's right. Okay. So what you want to do is go backwards on this. And it's just like you said, Candace. They divided, so you're going to multiply by this. <laughs> Tell me what you're going to do. How are you going to approach it? Well, we're putting the lattice rectum on the bottom, which is where the parabola is going to be situated above. So you're, okay, so the, the door facing is your lattice rectum? Okay. And my X move is negative 2.1, so I'm just going to take it away from there. That's, this is number one. 980.3? Yeah. Okay. That's not, that's not answer, 980.3, but what we did was take 980.4 and subtract a 2.1 from it. I'm making the initial graph, and then we're going to walk it and see if we can get it the same. So did you design this graph? I designed it myself, yes. Cool. Where's 40 at? 40 has to be this way. That's 40? Starting from this one? That's 24 right there. Right there. Right. So we have to cut. Uh, so this is yeah. 40. We have to cut this section out over here. I just got those pictures back, parabolas and stuff on them. Oh, really? What exactly did you take? Uh, I got this really neat parabola uh, from the water fountain. I think you'll like it. Uh, how are you going to upload these? Oh, I'm going to put this disc in here. Are you going to enter those into a calculator? Yes, I am. You know that you can enter that into the calculator okay. as a square. You don't actually have to square it out. Okay. For example, if you want to add... 62.4 squared. Right. Okay. And the calculator will do all that computation for you. Okay. There you go. Stop. 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 All right, go. That's good. Good job, Ben. Yeah. Well, better than I did. Mm -hmm. All right. Are you through with me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. 
Here they all are. And from here, you can take glares off, shrink them, resize them, do whatever you want to do with them. And then we can take the graphic there and show our water stained glass. Art just going to look like. I found these. Will these work? Yep. Okay, great. Okay. <laughs> now, who did you say was in charge of the points? Me. She's in charge of drawing the points. Okay, and you're putting a double arch, and uh -huh. and then you it's got a surprise be, for me, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's see what that is. How'd you do this? I mean, well, um, I wanted to trace the curve of a parabola, you know, and most of the time you just get the stationary ones, like the arches in the hallway. So I said, look, a water fountain ought to do that because, you know, water always comes up and out. They're double points. That's the parabola, right? That's the first one. Okay. So if we want to put a second parabola inside of it to give a width and configure eight into that, we're going to have to take four off the lattice rectangle. Times x minus zero squared plus eight. Okay. 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 Okay.
and let me see what you've got on it. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the graph going to look like if Ben counts to two seconds, moves off, and you go on, and then you go on two second intervals? I have no clue. Okay, let's, let's think about it again, all right? Ben starts off at zero seconds. In two seconds, Ben moves. In two seconds, you come on. Then two seconds later, I see what's gonna happen. What's you gonna move be? off and Travis It'll be like moves this. On. It'll be like the first line will be at about two and it'll be moving right there and then it'll go down to one and go like that and then up three like that, right? Show me. Okay. I like that a lot better than them coming straight down in a row. Right, and so you can just click one of the buttons and it'll take you right to the page. I like that. We have the links. There's your links. Yeah. Then we'll start off like that, then it'll go down to here and back up to something like that. Okay, do you others agree with him? Yeah. Let's try it and see. Yeah, I change it first. Okay. <laughs> you ready? All right. Go. Okay, did it look like you predicted it would? Yes. Yes, it did. Much. You did great. You did great. We're going to explain this. And this. So how it goes around. We're putting this on the overhead and this with the two programs. This one on the overhead, overhead too. All right, we're ready to do our presentations. Third group, you may begin. We learned that um, two parabolas make an ellipse, and the inner ellipse is um, the origin at zero, zero. If you mirror their two vertexes, they'll meet at a certain point. If you like, take positive 10 as your y and then negative 10 at the same zero, and you have the same x, a, and b, then they're going to they're gonna intersect at these points. Okay, so this group actually did a whole lot more than what I asked them to do. Okay, very good. Great. Ms. Harris downloaded this program we're going to use from uh, Texas Instruments off the internet, so. What I'm doing now is uh, plugging the points in that are on the ellipse. Uh, point A is like the distance between the outer part of the ellipse and the center part of the ellipse. And then you press graph, and then it graphs your, graphs your ellipse. Also, you can trace the path of the comet if you ever wanted to find where it was at a certain point in time. But this would be over probably a period of about a half a year, the way the distance between each time you push the button is really spread out. And then we made a graph on our own. It's wider because of our scale, we did different, and you can get it exact. You just get it closer with the equation right. that, we, that we formulated ourselves. Right, so in other words, you were able to use your algebra skills right. to get a better answer. Better equation. Right. 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 That's it. Did great, thank you. Yeah. Did great. Well, the x-axis is the time, like, from up to 10 seconds, and the y-axis we have is from, like, the little blue tape over here. It's like, this one right here is one up to five. So you're just saying that they were units yes. of some sort? Problems no. we had were, were finding out what, what time we actually had to start moving at a certain spot. Because, like, as you can see on the graph, you know, we had to start right there at three and a half seconds and stop until we got to six and a half, and then we had to start coming forward. And that caused some problems for us in our, as you can see, when we messed up, we had to get the timing right down. You had to collate both time and distance. Right. You did great. You did great.